or uh, say uh, UX research, design research, any research. Interviews are what gives us the direct information or insight. It's like, say, uh, as we have the phrase, right, from the hostess mouth. And uh, so in now in this uh, webinar, we'll be focusing on uh, three major scenarios, three different scenarios, and usually these are the scenarios we will encounter. So first would be if we focus only on the participant or one participant or say a more than one participant case of a group, or we focus on the participant while they are doing some activities. So an activity can be something in relation to a product that your company makes uh, if you are a business or UX researcher or design researcher or an activity with reference to uh, what you want to cover in your research that is something essential or important for your research question or if you are doing an ethnographic research ethnographic study then you would want to obviously record an activity to see or understand the cultural relevance or the implications of that activity now the third case can be when you want to focus on the space the participant is being interviewed in since that's what ethnography means uh, recording or observing participants in their natural surroundings or the surroundings they are comfortable in or they are aware of so these are the three scenarios that we will be looking into so let's uh, start with the first one so the first one as i said is focus is just on the participant so for each scenario i'll be giving you some tips which you can use and just keep in mind these tips are for when the camera is on video mode uh, so obviously canva doesn't uh, provide that option to show videos all throughout because of bandwidth issues so, uh, so tip one in the case of focus only on participant is you never place the camera right in front of the participant. I mean, not at least in the way it ends up staring uh, right into the face. So if you could see this image over here, the camera here is almost right in the face of the participant. So I'm not going to let you know that where the participant is from or what is this place. Um, so why should we avoid this why should we not put the camera right in front in uh, in the case in like staring into the face so what happens here is when we do something like this uh, we end up getting dramatized answers by the participant and uh, but we don't need that we need something which is more genuine in terms of responses we need genuine vulnerable truthful and um, say mostly spontaneous answer or maybe reflexive answers also that will eventually help us understand the cognitive, behavioral, and emotional reactions or say reflections of the participant with regards to a product or with regards to a question that you have asked. So if we end up uh, putting the camera like this, there's a chances of a little bit of drama coming in the, uh, in the responses of the participant. And um, see why people do that is sometimes, in some cases, not all, that people try to, they, or they want to exaggerate because they want their responses to matter. We want things to happen according to our way. And uh, maybe our experience differs. Maybe we are thinking something else. But we start feeling that we are the representatives of the society or the target user group. And we uh, feel that we play a significant role. Maybe we do play a significant role or the participant plays a significant role in deciding the course of the research. Um, but we have to be careful of that. Uh, that's not the only answer or only response we are uh, looking at. And uh, maybe this behavior can be because of various reasons, because they want eventually, uh, they want their emotional and social needs to meet because since the researcher is there asking them questions. So it is an opportunity for people or the participant to talk about their emotional and social needs. Um, and uh, that's one thing that can happen, dramatized answer. Alternatively, what can happen is we can get very limited answer or make the participant conscious of sharing their true reflections or reactions towards a product, towards our own question, towards what they are thinking. So before that, it is important to, uh, or maybe uh, to build a rapport because maybe you've not built a rapport with the participant and they're not feeling very, very comfortable and uh, or they have no emotional attachment uh, with the question you're asking or if it's a business research the product that um, you are talking about 
they've not used it enough and uh, it can be different reasons that they decide to give a limited answer and uh, so then eventually you will know that maybe they are not your right participant you need to speak to someone else um, so uh, before this going into something like this to avoid limited answers it is very much important to create a rapport because you just can't open the camera right uh, you know as soon as you are in the field you have to build a rapport get them comfortable and all so avoid uh, this thing this is the first tip that i want to talk about am i okay in terms of my uh, my, my uh, speaking my accent do you want to speak slowly or more clearly anyone having any problem maybe oh, a bit think... slower okay yeah. okay thank yeah. you all it's right a little yeah. bit so hot yeah but just okay. okay 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 i'll speak slowly yeah i'm sorry it's a habit since childhood to speak fast so but i'll right. speak slowly the yeah. vo voice is clear but uh, it's a little bit difficult to comprehend if you go fast okay fine all right so um, coming back to the second tip so the second tip is um, okay we take mid close up so these are all mid close up shots i'm sorry this image is not coming i think because of some internet issue but then these three these are all mcu or a mid close up shot so what is happening over here is the camera is behind uh, me as in like uh, since i was person researching here so the camera you put the camera behind you in a way that obviously you don't come in a frame so frame would be uh, ideally mean in simple terms putting a camera depending on the context that you want to cover in that uh, particular shot or that particular video so here the camera is behind me i can make the eye contact with the participant but they cannot directly see the camera so i'm sort of blocking their direct view with the camera and why we should do this uh, the participant is in direct eye contact with you because we need to make the eye contact with the participant not the participant eye contact with the camera and in this case the participant eventually becomes uh, you know aware that we are observing them their facial expressions their body language and emotions so it is a more deeper holistic interactive uh, interactiveness with the participant which is more important since our our job or our intention is not just to get some information or data uh, just words plainly we need to understand how they are behaving or how they are responding the expressions the body language with respect to whatever we have asked them and uh, since you pay more attention and uh, uh, have more empathy and a respectful approach while asking your questions so it just gives them an assurance to talk about their experience exactly as they feel they don't dramatize or they don't uh, give you limited answers because they are conscious uh, as i said the interaction is no more stage so this is the second tip in case we have only participant we call it a mid close up uh, shot so because mid close up is because you are uh, creating the shot or forming the shot from say chest level up approximately chest level up okay so the third tip in uh, this uh, case uh, focus on participant is um, okay so one second just give me a second guys i'm going to open my pdf because i think canva is not supporting me one second yeah just one second please Can you all see this uh, VLC or uh, this uh, screen? Is this thing visible? The new screen? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so this was the picture that wasn't showing in the earlier thing. Uh, 
so this is a couple so these are different scenarios uh, in uh, you know my from my own research work so this is all uh, mid close up uh, um, um, frames and uh, on moving on to the next one okay so this is it so the third tip is we uh, let's assume we interview part we have to interview the participants in their own in their houses or as i or in the surrounding or in a place they are more comfortable in so and we would also want to for some reason maybe um, um it maybe we want to make it more conversational or for whatever reason we also have to come in the frame and it's i think more common for places like where you know uh, say there's a chat you doing like a chat show or something here you can um, this is called a ucr because uh, here you have the camera right in between uh, yourself and the participant and uh, you are uh, sitting this is exactly a wide frame that we are talking about wide frame because uh, we can see the participant and the researcher here and we can see uh, parts of the surrounding or the space the participant and researcher are sitting in so uh, this is called a wide frame wide shot and ucr because the camera is at a lower level um, which means that uh, you the camera is again not really noticeable and not really bothering or affecting the uh, the responses of the participant or the interview so this uh, setting puts both the participant and you in a very comfortable position and it allows you to ask even the unscheduled questions because uh, most of the time sometimes even we go prepared with a list of questions or a scheduled or structured interview questions we also should be prepared for uh, things that are will be out of the box or we didn't expect or suddenly we would want to ask them so this kind of scenario makes the participant more comfortable and we are able to deep dive more into the participant's uh, persona and like how are they making educated choices um, in with respect to a product or the answers to your research question and what is motivating them and anything else that can be of importance to you for your interview or for your research so this is a very comfortable setting and you need not worry about like how are you looking or appearing this uh, can actually uh, make the participant more comfortable since this is a very friendly atmosphere like a it, it gives a very friendly feeling in giving answers so it is creates a safe empathetic and respectful environment and they end up mostly most of the times dropping their guard and they become more composed and give you truthful answers it's a very friendly setting so these are the three tips i would want to give uh, when we talk about focus only on participant tip one is uh, do not place the camera right in front like as if staring into the face of the participant uh, try to uh, in second case would be go for a mid close up shot where in um, the participant you, uh, the camera is behind you and the participant can have a, or make an eye contact with you but uh, Uh, will not be looking or staring right into the camera and the third one is uh, wide shot this is ucr the user user is also synonymous to participant uh, camera or uh, uh, this is a researcher and this is just an example you may have a different equation maybe you would have to sit on the floor and put the camera right in front of you with the help of a tripod or however so moving on to the second scenario which is what to do if the okay second is what 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 about uh, if the participant is doing an activity now the activity can be something with a relation to your product your business or it can be in relation to your uh, or anything which is not related to your product but essential for your research question so in this case where the camera will be placed depends upon uh, how much space you have where are you exactly or uh, how much of uh, the interaction would you want to cover uh, what i mean here is do you just like in this case the first picture do you just uh, do you want to cover the entire person uh, working on something doing some activity do you want to just cover uh, 
This is again a MCU mid close up shot, but taken from the side. Do you want to cover uh, from the sideways or do you want to probably have a top angle, like looking down on the participant? It all eventually depends upon what is your need, research need, and how much space you have, how much uh, participant activity interaction that you want to focus on. Uh, so yes, the first point here is when you want to capture how an activity is being performed, the camera here will mostly be only interacting with the participant's body language and uh, how it is being altered during the activity, uh, whether the participant is happy, sad or, or any other body language or emotions that change in reference to or with relation to the activity being performed. So it uh, may be noted as, or you can understand this as, we get to know the cognitive and sensory uh, skills being uh, put into practice by the participant while they do this activity. Uh, the participant facial expressions, as you can see, it uh, may or may not be visible or say partially visible. Uh, the purpose of this particular shot is uh, we're not just getting uh, tangible answers while recording interviews. We are also looking into something which is more emotional and behavioral responses with relation to the activity. The activity becomes the context over here. And it can vary across genders. It can vary across cultures. Maybe it can vary across different other different demographics. Um, so the final point in this case here is uh, the emotions will be directly proportional to the activity being performed. So suppose I want, I am tying my shoelaces and one of you is interviewing me how to tie my shoelaces and I am a six year old. So my emotions, my body language will depend on how easy or difficult for me it is to tie the shoelaces. So the, the body language is directly proportional or even the emotions become directly proportional to the activity being performed. Any concerns so far uh, in terms of speed or in terms of uh, in content, anything? Just a temperature check guys, just to know, just want to know if you guys are all doing okay and this is going okay. All right, uh, moving on to the next. Uh, so this is the first tip, opt for side profiling when participant and activity both are important. Moving on to the next one. Okay, so this is the second tip. So these are called close up shots and uh, we opt for them if we only want to capture the activity being performed. Now, uh, yes, this is one scenario. We just want to focus on the activity uh, being performed. And, uh, uh, and another case can be, let's, uh, we don't have consent of the participant to record them, like record their faces and all, but it is important for us to record a particular activity for our research question, for our research. So this is what you can opt for, a close up shots and uh, focus on the activity or how the product is being used. And we specifically focus on the body part that is interacting with the product. So here you can see just hands and uh, you know, uh, different activities can be seen here. But uh, maybe if you were someone, as I mentioned earlier, recording how a uh, person wears a footwear and something to do with your foot, a footwear that your company makes, obviously you would record both uh, feet like uh, wearing the shoe cross uh, activity and maybe the use of hands and uh, there is another reason we can use this is in case there's a limitation of space wherein you can't have wide shots or show the entire person in uh, 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 document the entire person in full frame so then also you can uh, show this activity because at least it will give you an insight into how your product is being used or say uh, what is the cultural relevance of uh, an activity uh, uh, with respect to different demographics. And uh, another thing where it can be helpful in you're doing covert ethnography, uh, wherein obviously um, most of you might know covert ethnography. Can anyone here tell me what is covert ethnography? 
uh, since we have researchers from all backgrounds, uh, just a quick question over here. And uh, who can answer about covert ethnography? This is going to be an interactive session, so I'll be asking such questions in between. Can, can someone answer about covert ethnography? Anyone? I just did a quick, I just did a quick Google search while, oh, okay. <laughs> while I was reading the slides. So yes, from that I understood that it basically means when you don't make your friend known to the person you're studying. Is that correct? Uh, you, I couldn't hear you, Tanishka. You just, I, I mean, it was uh, not very audible. Can you can you yeah, repeat it, yourself? Sure, sure. It said that it's ethnography when you don't make your presence known to the participant. Yes. Uh, would That's the people correct. from so yes sort of would the people from mm -hmm. social sciences would want to say something? What is covert ethnography? Yes, Dr. Nasser, would you want to say something? Okay, I, I don't think anybody wishes to answer. Hello? What is, yeah, hello? Yeah, yes. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. <laughs> Actually, I'm basically an anthropologist. So ethnography cannot be defined in a particular set of sentence because it needs so much of efforts. And I like the work which you are doing. Uh, in one word, we will say we are focusing that uh, any lifestyle or capturing any type of activities mm. or their culture mm. in every perspective, not only single perspective, not only mm. the research, mm. but live mm. with them to feel what they are observed, uh, to observe what they will feel, and calculating and observing every aspect of that. Hmm. A person or their lifestyles. Right. So, what would you call a covert ethnography? Uh, can you tell our uh, uh, friends from other research background if you put the word because we have covert and overt in uh, research, ethnography, ethnographic research. So, what would you call a covert ethnography in a layman's term? What is that? Covert or yes. COVID? Covert. C O V E R T. Covert. Uh, yeah. Suppose if, we, if, if can, one can say in a single sentence, it's not required to reveal your presence. That's what I feel. It. Yes, yes. So uh, that's what it is, Tanishka. You, you were correct. And yes, uh, uh, Mr. Dr. Prabhakar and Dr. Nasser, yes, uh, ethnography is understanding space, culture, participant, everything in totality, in a holistic view. And ethnography has overt and covert, wherein you overt would be you reveal yourself, you let yourself known, and the participants are aware about you, your actions. And covert, wherein would be you can't reveal yourself or maybe partially reveal yourself. So uh, this case uh, scenario, opting for close-up shots only on activity really helps when we are doing a covert ethnography because yes, I understand, we all understand ethics matter, morality matter, and as researchers, we have to uh, put ethics and morals, uh, give really importance to all these things, but we also have to uh, know that we uh, want to capture the right things for a research question. So we use such a shot, such a framing of camera, and uh, when the participant does not cons consented, we have to do covert ethnography. And uh, basically it means that you want to get some symbolic reference while keeping ethical boundaries. Because nobody can really make out like whose hand it is unless and until I mention a name or an address or any identifiable information. So these are just people. And again, how you place the camera depends upon, uh, you know, uh, where your space is, how easy for you it is to place the camera, and what is the activity that you are capturing. Say for example, uh, these uh, three shots are uh, maybe easy to understand. And so this one, the camera is behind the participant, and uh, this is a rock painting from Bastar. And uh, so this is called uh, over, the, uh, over the shoulder shot. 
wherein I'm only concerned, as I said, with the activity being performed, the participant or telling us, or talking to about uh, what the rock paintings are about and where did they come from or what's the cultural significance or relevance of the activity. And I'm not really much concerned with the, how the person looks or how my participant looks or how my participant uh, behaves or reacts emotionally. So moving on to the next one. Is it something like all the covert ethnography is uh, something unethical? No, I mean, I won't call it covert ethnography. I mean, I, don't, I would not answer this question. Uh, maybe... Uh, because I'm... sometimes, like, I uh, presume uh, there are people, like, when I go with some kind of a villagers who are so conscious about the camera, hmm. not be, like, uh, uh, what to say, like, reveal the exact truth because of uh, the shyness they face over the camera. In yes. case we could, uh, we could uh, first interview it and show and tell them that uh, we are uh, we have photo shooted you and mm -hmm. and get the permission later. Okay, so I would suggest is not to start the camera or even for that matter not to start uh, asking any questions unless and until you have created a rapport and clearly defined your intentions of your research. Uh, you know, tell them and how, what you're doing, how it will help them and why their answers matter. So, because we don't want to scare away our participants. We want, because eventually we are researching, one of the reasons uh, we are researching is also because uh, maybe to help them, maybe to help their culture, maybe to introduce a better product for their, uh, you know, development or any, for any other reason. So we have to building rapport is very very essential uh, before we start uh, the um, you know interviewing them with or without the camera and rapport building personally i feel uh, the best way to do a rapport building is uh, obviously as i said be very honest about what you want to do and if possible do some bit of participant observation or maybe quasi or like semi-participant observation wherein you yourself get involved with the activity the participant is performing so that they are like they know that you are truly interested in knowing your intentions are clear interested in knowing about them their life their culture and society etc uh, anybody wants to add on something to this concern raised by Lakshman yeah Dr. Samia uh, most of the things you have covered, but just uh, I would like as an anthropologist and as a researcher, the first and foremost thing is like that for any research, if you will see that uh, ethical perspective, hmm. first thing is like that, whether this research is needed or not. Sometimes what we feel, whatever we will uh, think, we will do it as a research. But if hmm. there is no nothing new, suppose if I'm going to cover any community or any tribal areas, mm -hmm. what new we are going to add in our academic world or any research world that is also needed and mm -hmm. yes obviously we have to be honest we have to be honest because obviously research is not a one day and one cup of tea mm -hmm. we have to develop our reputation as an academician because many of the time if you will see the earlier most mm -hmm. of the ethnographic studies mm -hmm. make people ashamed also i'm not saying that uh, commenting on anything but if you will see most of the nude photos of that uh, tribal areas are coming into that academic world without mm -hmm. their consent mm -hmm. so obviously mm -hmm. ethics matter that is why mm -hmm. the discussion was always mm -hmm. ethnography studies are unethical it mm -hmm. is not like that it is the approach is unethical mm -hmm. if we will go through the process and a correct approach don't mm -hmm. think so it is unethical Right, right. Absolutely, uh, Dr. Nasser. Ethics matter a lot. And uh, uh, I think ethics can also be subjective because there are times that, uh, you know, person may be okay with uh, their pictures coming, but sometimes uh, someone might be even conscious of uh, even not showing objects in their household. So I think maybe it can be a matter of subjectivity and relativity also. I mean, that's what, uh, you know, I feel. Anyone wants to add on something else before I move on to the next uh, slide? Because this is a very interesting topic raised by Lakshman. Yes, uh, we uh, don't want to scare away participants. We have to focus on ethics. So um, anyone wants to give an example of their own research, maybe to help uh, everyone understand better? 
it can be from any you can be from ux researcher you can be a design researcher or anthropologist or any anyone this is not a question specific to a particular uh, discipline or field of research okay i guess then i'll move further uh, so moving on to the I, okay, so moving on to the next uh, tip or next slide or uh, in relation to uh, while the participant is doing some activity. So if you can see over here, before this we were seeing mostly activities wherein the participant was partially visible or the placement of camera depended upon uh, how much of interaction, body, body activity interaction or the uh, activity that we want to cover. Then we also saw uh, just focusing on activity and that spe uh, specific uh, you know, body part that's interacting with the activity uh, for with regards to a research question or uh, whatever we need to find out. But there are some activities. So this is a fun act. This is a like fun question coming up for all of you. So, uh, so if you see, there are some activities wherein you have to have to uh, document or record the participant in full frame. Full frame would be the entire body of the participant is being visible. So uh, these are two examples uh, which we have over here. They can be many examples. So what I would want all of you to do is I'm going to be sharing a link right now in the chat box. Uh, one second. Where I would want you to answer this question. I would want you to take a minute or so and uh, there will be a link in your chat box. So just uh, access the link and uh, you can let me know, think about it. What do you think uh, or give examples of other activities wherein you would want to uh, cover the participant or the respondent in full frame as uh, shown here. So if you, I, let, I think you guys must be would be able to see the link now in the chat box. The purpose of the activity is also, uh, since this is uh, not this, I'm, I just want to make this interaction more fun and more classroom style. So I would want to, I just want to ensure that whatever I am uh, delivering or uh, talking about now, it is being understood uh, properly. And since, although I have people who are senior to me, but <laughs> I am the teacher over here. So yeah, so you can just access the link. And I'm going to also present, show this so everyone can see. So one person has commented shopping, more people can comment. It can be anything, doesn't matter culture or type or anything. Okay, interesting answers, everyone. Shopping, farmers, cultivating, using a plow, act, religious activity, writing in a classroom, manufacturing environment, capture emotional feelings of the participant. Mm -hmm. You can keep, 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 writing. keep writing. Okay, so, uh, right, and one person has mentioned their name. Uh, thank you, Alfia. Okay. Uh, organizing cultural events, AR, VR activity, trading and, and entertainment, yes. Okay. 
Okay, and one more, probably one more minute I'll give for you to think. People who have not responded, maybe you can think and write. Come to my day. Okay, guys, as you can see, if you all can see this uh, Mentimeter board. So there are these activities that would uh, more or less require for us to capture the person in entire frame, the full frame or the full shot, as we call it, wherein uh, the person is visible from head to toe and, uh, you know, a little bit of space is also visible. And if they are doing some activity, that activity would be visible. So it can be shopping, religious activity, someone writing on a blackboard uh, or maybe dancing uh, some cultural activity it depends if it needs for us to capture the entire uh, person in a full frame and uh, for example if uh, someone is in a religious place like say a temple and they, they are uh, maybe we might not need to capture the entire person uh, if they are participating in a religious gathering maybe and uh, yes uh, uh, Agricultural work is another more most important activity. One of the important activities that can that needs to be captured entirely. Um, someone has said, "Purbi Banerjee organizing cultural events." Okay, uh, I'm not sure what that means, but yes, I think it is in reference to uh, documenting cultural activities that require for us to capture in full shot the entire person or more than one person. If let's say it's a group dance happening or group, uh, mostly in case of dance, because if it's a group singing happening, uh, then maybe maybe not. We may not, not we may need to capture the entire person. So. Uh, this is the this is just a small activity that I thought of doing with you all. And moving on to the next, uh, our uh, one second. the next scenario that we have to be talking about is focus on the space. The also on the space the participant is um, in or sitting in or uh, is based in. So moving on to that. Okay, so focus on the space, uh, also on the space the participant is being interviewed in because uh, just focus, just documenting or recording uh, the participant is not enough in be it the product research or ethnographic research or any research. Uh, participant uh, space is very, very important. Uh, the space includes other people, uh, family members or other members of the society, the elements in the space. It can be objects or other or animals or any other elements because the, the culture or the participant that we would be focusing on is made up of all the elements that are present in the space. So this is the some examples of uh, how you can place your camera. So this is the first one is a full shot. Then the second image is a wide shot. Um, and uh, the third image is, uh, is a wide slash long shot. And uh, also how much of space is to be recorded and, um, and where to place the camera again depends upon your requirement of your research or research question or what you wish to document. There are times when you would want to focus on the space and the participant in equal uh, proportion. And there are times when you like say this, this image over here, uh, when you would want to sort of focus more on the space and how the participant is blending or maybe becomes or is a part of the space. And uh, so there are different scenarios. And in the last image over here, there will be times when you would be recording a participant using a, you know, an audio recorder, but uh, the, you would be capturing the space in your camera. Uh, because not always it is necessary that uh, the participant or the interview your respondent and the space have to be recorded simultaneously. But these are different scenarios that uh, you can come across. Now, moving on to the next one. Okay. So the first tip uh, I would want to give here is go for a wide or a long shot if you are participants natural or known surrounding. 
So the difference between wide and long shot, they are uh, sort of synonymous, but the difference here is in wide, uh, obviously the frame is, is more wide and uh, because maybe you can see things better or the space is better captured in a wide frame like the first image and long would be the frame or the uh, surrounding space is better captured in a long frame like the second image. Uh, so, and why would we need to do this? Why do we need to focus on a wide shot or a long shot is because uh, it's interaction of the participant. We understand the interaction of the participant with the space and how intimate the relationship is between the participant and the space and the elements present in it. Uh, yes, that's what the second point also says, interaction of the objects with space and placement of the objects and how objects or elements in the space are placed that also helps us to, uh, we also understand that by using this uh, kind of shot or framing. And uh, now since it's COVID times, uh, another benefit of this shot and uh, not specific to COVID times is interaction between indoor and outdoor space. Suppose you, your participant is say, in, hypothetically sitting in a porch or say a veranda and you would, uh, you can use this shot while I'm trying to understand the indoor uh, because a porch or a veranda is a mix of outdoor and indoor space. So you can also use this shot to understand how the, the indoor space, that is the house, and how the outdoor space, that may be the road or, in, or whatever is there in front of the porch or the veranda, how the porch or veranda acts as a connection between the two. So there is, uh, this is another example case wherein such a shot can be uh, useful. No. And uh, I, no. I, guys, can you please uh, put the uh, mic on mute? I can, I can hear someone talking in the background. Yeah, thank you. And uh, limitations of the space and also of the subject or also we get to know what are the limitations of the space that we are recording in terms of the participant with respect to the objects. Uh, this is more helpful in the case of a business or a UX research perhaps, or, your, or like a market research, wherein we want to see if our product would fit in or not, and what is the demographics, should we start a new business or not, and or maybe in terms of our, you know, ethnographic research also, should we document this or not, does it uh, you know, answer our question or not, or relevant to our research question. So the, this is why we can go for a wide or a long shot. So if I ask you guys, like in the uh, first picture, can someone tell me there are two X's, if you can see, purple and blue. So can someone tell me where was I standing and where was the camera uh, placed? Who would like to take a chance? I think the camera is the right side one. Uh, which, which, which X is it, purple or blue? Blue. Okay, anyone else? Camera is on the center. Okay. Anyone Anyone else? Are there any other guesses? Tanishka, Harris? I think it's the blue cross. Okay. As well. <laughs> no, no, I'm changing to purple. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> okay, Mihaela, would you want to say something? Where Which uh, cross is me and which cross is my camera? Okay, no, no one else wants to yeah. It's purple. The center. Okay. Purple, purple is the camera. Okay, purple is the camera and blue is me. Right. Uh, camera is in okay. the front side, front side. Okay, do you guys have the uh, raise hand option in your phone? So let's do this. How many say the, the uh, purple cross is the camera? Okay, if you have the raise hands option in your Zoom, let, maybe you can try that. Okay, so Ankita's raised hand for purple is the camera. Where is the raise hand? 
Okay. And how many say that blue is the camera? Okay. Fine. Thank, thank you, guys. Um, so, um, over here, the purple cross is me where I was standing and blue cross is where the camera was. So because you can see their expressions over here. And uh, so, I mean, if, if, the cam if the camera was, uh, you know, you just have to study the expressions of the participant that will help you understand where the participant, uh, where the camera was placed or where, uh, the, or where the researcher was placed. Because if you see, if I was standing here, I mean, they would have been looking in a different direction. So, uh, since I have to make eye contact with the participant to get their emotional responses or truthful, vulnerable answers, so I'll have to stand in a way and preferably sit in a way uh, wherein the participant is actually interacting with me in a conversational style and they are uh, not uh, very conscious or giving dramatized answers. So, all those who said that uh, the purple crosses me and blue crosses camera, you guys are correct. Now coming up with the second question. So this is a library as most of us probably can make out. So what do you think can be um, in terms of using the camera or let's say interviewing, what do you think can be the possible limitations in this space? Anyone wants to talk about it? Limitations or maybe issues, any kind of issues? It's very messy. It's not arranged well, so it's difficult to read. No, I'm talking in terms of researching, in terms of using the camera here, not because of reading. Uh, oh. Yeah. Okay, okay. It's camera, right? The light and space issues. Yes, Dr. Mohammed Nasser, yes, light and space issues can be one thing. The composition of the picture. Uh, in the sense of, can you be more specific? Uh, the composition of the uh, image, okay. alignment. Okay. Uh, okay. The camera is placed before the. It is not easy to. Sorry. Yes, please. Sorry. Yeah. Objects please, please. are not easy to identify. Uh, yes, that's a right on um, one of the right answers. The objects may be difficult to identify in case we are looking at uh, uh, We want to focus on uh, the objects also because since this is a, it's a library not uh, under renovation and not properly maintained uh, it becomes uh, you know difficult uh, for uh, uh, us to uh, understand of or sort of decide where to place the camera and it can also in this in specifically in this case it can con even cause a bit of confusion for the participant and uh, so we would obviously we'd have to work our way around uh, as to where to uh, you know put our uh, camera or where to uh, you know make the participant sit and Yes, another big example in a library, since it's an empty library, but uh, if there were people, it can be, you can't you know, speak loudly. That's the biggest uh, limitation in uh, such a scenario. So um, there will be such limitations that will come across uh, if you want to capture both space and also the subject and object in it and us understanding their interaction. So our job is to not uh, have ethnocentric thoughts uh, as to uh, this is messy or this looks like that. This is the space. This is where the participant is. Or this is where they are comfortable in. So we have to work our way around how we interview them. So yes, uh, uh, not to be a, get ethnocentric or not to have any cultural relativism is one of the important things. Another few, uh, among so many other things, to not let the our uh, you know our form any prejudices or biases with regards to the participant or the research. So okay, uh, moving on to the uh, last uh, or the second tip in this uh, focus also on space. Uh, this is the second tip. So before I uh, talk about uh, the second tip, you can just you know watch this uh, video. One second.
Yeah, okay guys. Uh, so this was a scenario. Uh, yeah. Hi, can you all hear me? Yeah, so this was a scenario. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I can thank, hear you. Th thank you. Yeah, so I hope everyone others also can hear me. So this was a scenario uh, wherein I maybe uh, let's assume that you had uh, more than one participant or like say a one gatekeeper, but uh, the activity or the uh, elements that you want to record in research includes more than one person. So this is something called as a handheld shot. Uh, where it, you're just you know moving around holding the camera there's no tripod or you just if you're using a mobile phone you're just uh, moving around uh, depending on elements that you want to capture and uh, since this uh, particular video included a 360 degree move so this is a 360 degree shot but it need not be a 360 degree shot it can be just like a 180 degree or something but your camera is in handheld motion so why do we need to do this is because you need to record the space, the components in it and their interactions uh, in it and uh, you know, the interaction with each other, that is the interaction of people, objects and activities. Uh, so that's why, and we just have like one gatekeeper, but uh, others are also since involved in the activity or an essential part of that space or the activity and that we need, it becomes important for us to record them also. And uh, I mean, if you have, if you are able to get multiple cameras in research, which is never possible in research, then we use one camera or two camera accordingly, then we don't have to do this handheld shot. But in case such a scenario is there, this is what we do. And uh, you need to record your interviewee talking about activity as, as we just saw and uh, like how they are doing and also the activity. Uh, others that are involved in this. In this case, this is a rope making process in uh, Kumarakam, Kerala. And so one person was talking about he was a gatekeeper, like a guide for this community and the uh, rest everyone was showing us how a rope is made. And um, uh, yes, you need to record any diversity based on gender. That's what it helps us. So there we saw there were two men involved in an activity and there's one woman here and uh, they can be an activity which has other demographic uh, difference, differences or diversity also. So again, a uh, handle chart can be useful. And uh, so you need to record one speaker, but multiple actor. So speaker here is just one person in this case, for example, and they can be multiple speakers also. And but in this case, there was just one speaker, but multiple actors as in like the performers um, in the activity. And uh, so, and sometimes it is not necessary to be focusing entirely on the speaker or the gatekeeper. Uh, yeah, so this is a handheld shot, which can come in handy when you have more than one person to record. And I would suggest in case of this, uh, it again depends on your research question. You can go either starting from the activity, showing the activity first, and then moving on to the interviewee or the main speaker or the gatekeeper, or you can do the other way around, depending on how you, you want to set your context. Okay, so these these were the this was the presentation, the different tips that I can uh, possibly give you, or that I use personally uh, in my when I for research and this is different uh, for case scenarios and different tips now uh, we can anybody who has questions is more than welcome to ask me questions and uh, really appreciate if some of you or maybe all of you can turn your video because it's it's easy for me to you know have a personal interaction with you and answer you directly and maybe uh, answer you according to whatever your question is anyone has questions Or you can take two minutes and I'm sharing another link in the chat box where you can just write your questions and I'll, I'll share it with everybody so everyone can see also see the questions because and this question answer round is not just you asking and me answering if any one of you has has some input that you would want to add on you're more than welcome. Yes, Ramya. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
how you are going to proceed in uh, this situation pandemic situation to doing such type of studies okay uh, uh, one thing is like that and second thing what is your opinion regarding that uh, ethnographic studies in uh, hospital settings okay which is again related to are you asking with reference to current times or in general in general also because uh, many of the times we give some students to go there and just capture what is going on what the difficulties they are facing but hmm. we need in depth details hmm. Hmm. now it is very impossible and uh, hmm. second what we face as a matter of concern is uh, what dr lishman told also that people get cautious why they are recording especially in that hospital things now hmm. Where, hmm. Um, but we want to just to capture from which background mm. they are coming how they are feeling and giving their responses means their facial expressions regarding the facilities mm. what we are providing mm. so mm. as an ethnographer mm. what would you suggest for a better way and okay, uh, okay so like, okay and so talking firstly in a generic scenario what other what ways that we can use uh, in terms of uh, maybe not entirely but partially replicating ethnographic setting is something called as uh, digital ethnography but unfortunately digital ethnography although it is the need of the hour maybe but it is not very inclusive because yes to do digital ethnography your participant or your it should firstly have like there, there should be a good uh, internet connection or they should have access to the digital media so there are things like uh, so and before that yes you need to take uh, some ethical uh, permission uh, from the participant so maybe if your participant allows let's hypothetically take the case of a hospital you just and if you you know you have spoken to your participant if they allow you can uh, you know record them over uh, zoom you can interact with them over zoom and uh, so that's one option and before that even another thing that we can do is or you can do is something called as mobile ethnography or uh, asking say live blogging but uh, the challenge or the thing to be made uh, you know uh, keep in mind over here is that in uh, you we have to sort of train the participant or maybe set context um, to let them ask them okay this is what we want to for capture so it's like a collaborative ethnography so we ask them this is what we want to capture this is what we want to uh, include in our research this is why it is important so give context give the so it's like a struct, semi structured uh, way and but also let the participant uh, uh, have a free hand because you never know what they would record uh, in a mobile ethnography something may be interesting so this is uh, one option this is ideally right as of now the best way because if you hope start a camera and uh, you want to record their facial expressions yourself then they might not be comfortable since like a, a hospital for example is a very personal or uh, setting because people already are you know under different kind of stresses or emotional and mental or maybe physical so they might not be very uh, open to answering but but if you don't if you are uh, if you don't want to exactly capture the emotions just want to capture how people are interacting with the space uh, for example the hospital then we can do something like a extreme wide shot a very wide shot or maybe put the camera from you know in a more you know, like there, there's a more, lot of distance between participant and the camera and uh, where we are just getting a hint like a participant are present in like a silhouette form which is understanding how the interaction is happening so these are some things cases some examples we can work around um uh, when when it comes to using uh, you know doing ethnography in current times i hope that answers your question yeah yes <laughs> yes uh, obviously it will be very uh, specific to the case specific to the research that we are doing and uh, maybe another thing what you can do is if possible use zoom calling or any other video calling option and ask the participant to sort of give you a tour of the, themselves and where they are their space is where we can uh, just keep asking the questions and definitely all this happens after the uh, you know ethics have been uh, you know met and all we've taken due permissions okay um all right so let's uh, take some questions
uh, could we do it in remote asking the participant to set their own camera asking question or phone yes this is what i answered right now so this is we can use the phone mobile ethnography live logging also the same thing digital diaries we can do it over zoom so there are some of the cases but as i said digital ethnography is unfortunately not very inclusive like uh, we have to you know th these things are possible in environment where there are uh, you know access to all these features so how would you approach ethnography to study human animal example pet dog interactions uh, how would i okay so tanishka so maybe uh, in this case uh, it, uh, i mean uh, this is a, this can be a tough one because if you want to capture so in this case probably will be i'll just be using a handheld shot because i can't uh, and along with this i will just interview uh, the participant maybe just getting their insights or information for them what is uh, how important their pet is or the pet dog is or why have they kept the pet dog or uh, any other questions and uh, that can happen in as i said mcu or uh, mid close up or say a wide shot or a full shot and then later on i can include or you can include whoever wants to this can include uh, uh, say a handheld shot wherein uh, i mean uh, maybe a little tough but maybe you can just uh, walk along with the participant while they walk the dog and trying to record how the dog is behaving but be careful that the dog doesn't bite you so uh, because in this case in ethnography we are uh, we are not just focusing on the human or the animal we're focusing on the interaction and also we want to focus on the interaction of the pet dog or the pet animal along with in the space or in the participant space so it's like a sharing yeah, of space because the challenge yeah Yes, and the challenge would be that the dogs would actually react to your presence as an ethnographer. So yes. maybe the interaction that you see between the person, the human, and the dog might not actually be. Real, yes. 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 So. Yes. Ab absolutely. So probably in this case, even covert ethnography can work, or maybe you can just oh start your camera and put it in you know somewhere, and it eventually depends on the space we are in, and uh, uh, you know how. because our uh, our agenda over here is or or uh, we we have to sort of this might sound funny because we have to build a rapport with the animal also because so that yeah, you know, they exactly. are, yeah 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 mm. yeah anyone wants to comment on this also maybe you yeah. could you yeah. could maybe give um, you know how you have small gopros you could actually even give those to the to the human yes, and they yes absolutely yes absolutely instead of you going there Yes, ab absolutely. You can do that. Give the GoPro again. It will be like a mobile ethnography. Like since th th this is mm. the time, especially for collaborative right. ethnography, so something similar. And uh, so again, we'll have to work our way around it. Um, now, second question is: In marketing research, we often ask participant to make a personal video of their activity. Again, this is something similar to mobile ethnography, live logging. How do you usually carry out this kind of? self reported activity i mean uh, how, how do i usually carry out this kind of self reported activity harris are you asking me how would i study or analyze this activity uh, it's more about how to make sure that the participants can record the right things okay they don't get carried away like that like they follow the context yeah yeah so as i said we have to give the context to the participant as to what we are like maybe a set of questions or maybe one questions don't don't give too many questions or too many too much of context to the participant because it can be very overwhelming very intruding uh, we give the context to the participant that this is what we need to focus on for example uh, maggie did a campaign that they want ask the participants or the users rather to document themselves uh, how they felt with the maggie uh, maybe themselves individually or with the family or as with a loved one anything and but in addition to giving the context so we can also uh, let the participant uh, give give them a little bit of a free hand so that uh, they know that they have no restrictions they are not they have not they, they don't have too much of limitations or restrictions while recording themselves maybe they give you an insight into something else that they do maybe we are thinking that maggie can only be made by boiling it the you know classic way of making a maggie but uh, like uh, so for example if i was a participant in my hostel days i used to make maggie using uh, geyser water 
So if I, Maggie had asked me to document myself, I would have been probably one of the different customer or users or participant who's making Maggie out of Kiesel water. So, so we have to give a little bit of free hand also to the participant. And uh, because, uh, you know, uh, one thing is, which is obvious as to matching the context given by the user or the, or the researcher that, uh, yes, connects with the other people who watch the, uh, watch the advertisement or watch the video. But anything in addition to it can also create new communities or can give uh, people new insights into, okay, this is another way this product can be used or this looks interesting. So that's how the uh, best way to do something like this. And yes, do you provide I think also it's, yes. uh, I, I think also the framing is really important. I mean, yes. if you ask someone to document themselves on how they cook instant noodles, hmm. they might I just, you know, actually cook them versus mm -hmm. you ask them how they consume and yes. to record how they consume yes. noodles. Some people just eat them raw. They just add yeah. the spice powder on the and they just eat raw. Yes. So even the way they make can actually yes. bias, bias or not bias the participants yes. Uh, yes. collection of their own. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. So it's like we're asking them to give and tell their journey of with the instant noodles, right? From maybe, you know, uh, maybe yeah. buying it to consuming it or uh, whatever we need mm. to include, giving them a little bit of a free hand. So yes, some bit of guidance is important. And we can also let the participant know if possible as to what all we are, what are other elements that are necessary for us in terms of while they record themselves in mobile ethnography? Do we just, as, as just, uh, I think this was Tanishka speaking, so as, uh, I mean, we can also let them know, do we just want to record them standing in front of a gas stove and recording making the Maggie noodle or do you want to, uh, you know, capture how the Maggie noodles are shared between, say, siblings or anything? So this is some guidance that we can give. Uh, now it is sometimes we neglect certain small aspects in ethnographic research. You highlighted the importance of those minute aspects clearly. Thank you very much. Yes, ethnographic research is not just about people, participants, it's about space, it's about elements in the space, objects, non-living non -living and non-living interactions, human-animal, human, -animal, human uh, interaction, and human and non-living object interaction. Everything is a part of a culture. Uh, or the society or that space. Um, now the second next question is, what is the difference between documentary film and ethnography film? All right, this is a very good question. So documentary films in most cases are uh, linear uh, uh, form and uh, they are uh, thematic, more thematic. They have a certain theme and ethnography is uh, can be linear or uh, need not be linear and ethnography doesn't have a specific theme it, because it includes every aspect of the culture whereas documentary can be more political more social or anything so it's uh, that's that's one of the main differences but they uh, are uh, eventually we are in both cases documenting but uh, the execution or the ideation of uh, both the uh, formats differs Okay, I, is, is this clear or anybody wants any more clarification on documentary film and ethnography film? Okay, last question. How would you approach ethnography study in the psychiatry, psychiatric department of hospital? Thank you, Alexandra. Okay, Alexandra, are we looking into documenting like who's, who are our key participants? Can you uh, like let me know? Are we talking with regards to say uh, the doctors or the hospital staff or are we talking about the say the you know, people, the participants or the people who are uh, you know, the, uh, the patients? Hello, Alexandra. Can you, can you be more clear about your question? Hello? Hello? Okay, so I think it will eventually, okay, I'm talking about my patients. Okay, so, right. So, uh, in again, in this case, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I would, uh, it depends on the situation, the surround, the setting. 
you can, as I said, uh, like maybe do a covert ethnography place. If you have like a room to yourself or your patients, you can maybe put a camera somewhere. Uh, if you have their consent, great. Uh, you can just document them. And, uh, or maybe if you think you can do mobile ethnography, you can uh, you know, let them uh, do mobile ethnography. Or uh, it, it uh, I mean, this is what best I can answer for this question. It eventually depends upon how comfortable your participants are or your patients are. And uh, because if you do mobile ethnography, you there might be complete diversion from what your research question is, or there might be, you might be getting new answers or new insights about what your research question is, or about the behavioral or emotional cognitive uh, aspects or uh, uh, thinking or, uh, uh, for, of the participant, so uh, it's it's like uh, uh, so. You, in this case, probably if, if I may say, you'll have to take some bit of a risk as to where you should place the camera and uh, what uh, part you should be recording. Okay, any more questions or uh, reflections? Uh, uh, anyone? I'm going to stop sharing this. Yes. Do we really need to place a camera somewhere or even one can hold a camera like we can take two or three persons there and you take you mean to say two or three people with mobile cameras? Yeah, something. Yeah, like you that. can do that. It's not limited that you need to have a digital camera. See digital camera or DSLR all depends upon how much money you have for the research, if I be honest here. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's what it depends upon. And uh, uh, yes, uh, you can uh, have, uh, if you have more than multiple people, more people in your research, let uh, everyone do a job, divide the work and let everyone record uh, accordingly uh, what they wish to record in, for the research. It's better to place the camera somewhere, right? Instead of no, holding no, a camera. See, no, the placing, like placing the camera, I would suggest you do it when you are the only, let's assume you're the only person. A, you're the only person do, doing both the asking the questions and also recording. Uh, or uh, you want to capture something wherein there's a lot of movement. So, I mean, you don't want to the camera to be too shaky so that's another scenario and uh, so it depends upon what your condition is what the situation is what you want to capture and where the camera needs to be placed or handheld yeah right. any yeah, yeah any, so that's probably another 10 15 minutes anyone has any more questions or reflections or thoughts Hello? Yes, hi. Hi, hi Soumya. Uh, yeah. uh, I met you in Lamakan, Hyderabad. Uh, I live in Hyderabad. At that time, yes. you told me that you are planning to do some research work on Chinchu tribe in Nallamalai forest in Andhra Pradesh. Yes. Any plans are you did or do you have any plans in future? Uh, I come across new ideas every day, new, why, the, the, I mean, see my prime focus is my, in terms of my passion or interest per se, is on documenting, uh, say, indigenous communities, but uh, uh, there are, you know, more than 600 or so, at least around 600 indigenous communities. So my research, since I work independently without any support, my research depends upon how, if I have funding or not. Or not. So my next project is uh, most likely whenever that happens is going to be on the Tamangs of Sikkim. Tamang tribe of Sikkim. So I don't know when I'll be working on Chenchu. So I'm sorry about that. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Any, yes. Feel free to ask me any questions, guys, with regards to what the presentation was about or anything else that you would want to cover. So, Mihaila is asking me, how do you present the results of your visual ethnography research? What do you focus on and which format for the results you you use so uh, it eventually depends upon what my medium is or like am i make taking videos or am i taking photographs because uh, visual ethnography can be videos photos or say memes or uh, uh, maybe paintings there are different different ways of representation 
uh, and so eventually you can, I, I can do something which is a mixed medium and uh, and what do you focus on and which format for the result it uh, depends upon uh, what is needed what is the research question what the client needs or what do i need to focus on my research if my if my interest is or if i just want to document some objects and how they are placed in an environment or in a space maybe even simple photographs can be helpful and uh, otherwise if you i want to capture how an activity is being performed then i can take some videos uh, and eventually see in uh, on and ground especially when we take videos there's a chance that we document a lot of things but then when we go back we might have to edit a bit we might have to uh, take out the best chunk because eventually if, like for example if we have to cater to a client we cannot be showing every thing to the client we have to showcase what is uh, more essential or important from business perspective and uh, uh, i hope mihaila that answers your question uh, second then is how can we do content analysis uh it's the probably it's, this is something similar to the above question how do, do we do see content analysis when you watch uh, when you see something of image or a meme or depends upon what the content is you have to look into firstly what is obvious in that research or in that image or in that video or the visual uh, represent presentation you have to focus on the obvious elements and then we have to focus on what is not so obvious or sometimes hidden and uh, so that's that's how you do your content analysis and we also try to study that uh, how uh, the elements present in that uh, particular picture or video or visual are interacting with each other say uh, see, sometimes memes can be uh, a good way of helping us dig deeper uh, then we have do you use any technology software for commenting and making notes on the videos you take uh, yes uh, see my case i you i mean I, I use editing so i just edit in whichever software uh, i use iMovie or you can use uh, you can do subtitling and you can add text if we are making videos and because uh, and, and ideally i would i would suggest that in making videos from from a research perspective we have to uh, add a lot of uh, text because sometimes just showing videos might not be easily understood by uh, the client or the our, our final audience so there are subtitling options or adding uh, options for adding text so there are different software some some things work with mobile uh, some things work uh, maybe on your on your desktop so uh, it's it's now it's much even much easier i mean as compared to earlier okay uh, then we have uh, is it possible to use hidden camera to record the video in a hazardous situation where camera is forbidden but the videos are required to research yes that's something which which you might probably do in a covert ethnography uh, and hazardous situation as to what we are referring to like a storm has come Or what sort of situation are we talking? Or, or we don't have the consent. Like, what is this? What is this? Uh, hello. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for example, there is a, a like a, a sensitive issue that we are going to take into mm. uh, into account. For example, when we are going to let's see to see that a people mm. uh mm. the the lifestyle in the mm. You know, this is in in a pub or in a bar, or their drinking habit, or their mm. sexual preferences that we are going to take into a deep information. Mm. That the we we need to capture their their facial cues, but we don't mm. want to distort them with mm. any camera. You understand my point? Yes. Right? Yes. Just in that kind of situation, that sometimes that is mm. we want to because. We want to tag their their mm. facial and their gesture mm. because that is more important when they are describing such informations. So, is it possible to use that uh, uh, hidden camera? So yes, 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 definitely. Right, right. You you is can. It, you... Uh, uh, is it uh, ethically acceptable in research? Uh, so to be to to give. Uh, <laughs> any any guidance maybe for the uh, not to disclosure personal information or like that then we can use as a guideline to uh, do 
uh, the graph reverses on the hazardous situation like that? Uh, so I so I'll give you um, so if, let's assume hypothetically that uh, there's there's a very uh, I for, I forgot uh, you know the name of the film it's a it's a film by one of uh, one of the best classic visual ethnographers or anthropologists Jean Gouche so he's the father of cinema verite which is real life cinema as we call it and he has a film wherein he or like it's a short film uh, yeah. like a short documentary so he has a film which is about. Uh, uh, oh. I think it, it showcase. I for, forgot the country or the culture, but it showcases uh, uh, genital mut mutilation. So, or like the process of castration. So, yeah, in uh, I'm, I'm uh, so in uh, the one of the Islamic communities. Uh, so I don't remember exactly which uh, community it is, but uh, and, uh, yes. So just giving an example like this over here. So, uh, so if you. Have obviously considering we don't have a consent of the participant to record mm -hmm. what they are doing, yeah. and uh, so in this case, uh, but we want to maybe capture. So either uh, so if we want to completely focus on the ethics, uh, then mm -hmm. don't focus, don't don't uh, capture the actual activity happening. Maybe uh, use symbolic references like. Uh, I okay for a for exam. I don't for uh, it depends upon what best symbolic references uh, that you can use that can replicate or give an understanding and use the symbolic references along with the text, along with the text okay. background, so that it makes the other person like the audience understand as to okay, this must have happened. And in gen, in addition to it, we interview the participant, uh, you know, just asking them why did they do, do they do this at what age or whatever mm -hmm. our question. Is. So yes. this is our, you know, a way around uh, asking, uh, uh, you know, um, doing, doing uh, something in a hazardous uh, situation because mm -hmm. uh, tr truth be told, we're be very honest, it is not always possible to be 100% ethical because it's possible that you're documenting something from a symbolic perspective, you're using symbols and if this, but symbols have to be a part of that culture or society. I mean, you just can't document something which has no connection with the society or the activity. So something, some relation has to be there. Um, for for example, um, I have to, I had to once uh, document uh, uh, or wanted to once uh, document. Uh, I was allowed to document some uh, like a like a sacrifice, like an animal sacrifice, a beheading of a, of a goat. But I couldn't show it on uh, video, and the only way I could probably uh, yes. uh -oh. show. Yeah. yeah. Um, only way I could show it is uh, maybe showing the elements, like say the axe or the elements that they used in doing this. Maybe uh, sharpening of the knife, and then I had to show, the, like say, some other elements which sort of represented death or something like that. So you have to. Yes, I, I, under, I, under, I really understand. <laughs> okay. At least we know that this is possible to to do that in yes. that kind of situation. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, now, Rohini yeah. is asking, is Thank there, you. well, most welcome, most welcome. Is there any software for content analysis? Content analysis for, uh, you, I don't, I don't think of any, I can't think of any software that is there for, uh, you know, direct content analysis because, see, uh, understand and analyzing a video or anything visual or any video or photograph or meme has to also, uh, depends a lot on your own, say, cognitive thinking, your emotions, because visual ethnography, it's always, you always have to follow a very reflexive approach. You have an understanding of a culture, of something, you record, you have your pictures and videos, and then we analyze, uh, uh, you know, how it is different or what you need to add in more or what you miss. So uh, it is a lot of, you know, hard work yourself. You just can't use a software. I don't, I, I, pers I don't think of any software that is there. Can anyone you know, talk, maybe tell me about a software also? I'll also learn if there's a software where we can just put a, some images and videos and it will self-analyze itself. Do we have anything? Anyone from maybe design background? I, I don't know who would answer this question. Okay, moving on to the next question then. Can you please highlight all right, uh, thank you to those who are leaving and uh, thank you for attending and uh, uh, I'll be sharing a, 
like a link sort of a link for feedback or uh, maybe if you like the session you can give me a shout out on social media facebook or linkedin now asking answering uh, ms dr prabhakar's questions can you please highlight something on copyrights of videos or photos like my videos or photos dr prabhakar or in general in general madam okay so, so who will get the copyright so the the copyright uh, if we have sought permission from the participant of the community to document then the copyright uh, stays or depend or stays or yeah stays with the person recording or the, if you have a company it stays with you but uh, uh, but i personally always uh, in my work i always have believe in having like a co copywriters or something like i give the uh, because i it, it's always a collaborative effort it is not just me who's working i because without the participant the, the gatekeeper i would not have been able to do what i want to do so it's always like a uh, shared copyright so i hope that answers your question but since we are representatives maybe in a way like we are uh, we want to reach out uh, to the other society or maybe the world to talk about to because uh, ethnography or visual ethnography is a lot to do with archival and promotion and documenting mostly archival so we have to uh, sort of we have it's a moral obligation or responsibility to focus to uh, ensure that the Uh, you know we take care of the copyright but uh, uh, whatever assist help or assistance is happening or whatever benefits that are happening that i personally ethically i feel that that should belong to the actual community okay okay thank you thank you so much and uh, if i want to study ethnography can you suggest can someone suggest gopi chand where can he start if he wants to study ethnography some books who would want to suggest uh, yeah the maybe the uh, anthropologist here can say or anyone who can you can give suggestion to gopi chand where would you start with where can they start with yes please dr prabhakar would you want to suggest or anyone else who still uh, mihaila would you want to suggest if you are still there where can they start or um, the learning about ethnography anybody want to no suggestions here anybody wants to answer this question if uh, gopichan asks if i want to study ethnography can you suggest how can how can some how can you start what books would you suggest what or universities or yeah. and i want to know the career in ethnographer as a ethnographer uh, what kind of jobs available i mean after studying i want to know uh, dr prabhakar dr tapaswini goda can you please help our friend here and uh, I think this uh, this would be best answered by the anthropologist here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The study of anthrop uh, ethnographic studies are really very interesting to understand other community and also other aspects. And uh, whichever the things we really focus, we can uh, get update with the each and every aspect, and also study even in the minute aspects also. that will be enjoyable thing in suppose if you do the ethnographic uh, research all those things uh, visual anthropology visual ethnography research is more interesting than a uh, regular ethnographic research what we used to do and mm -hmm. and if you if anybody are interested some anthropology departments are offering uh, anthropology even you know one of the area of interest of uh, ethnographic studies is a, a mm -hmm. part of their component in their uh, curriculum Mm. there you can learn and also a lot of opportunities also there 
either you can do it uh, at never fit research uh, for the companies or overall required so overall really wanted to understand the people or product or something out of it for example suppose if some some companies wanted to know that how their products are uh, selling how the people are uh, uh, accepting their products and also how they are responding to their uh, products and such kind of things at that time okay. so the, uh, the never fit research also can do and to get the whole information and minute information even small information all the information holistic kind of approach you can do it to understand the things and do it uh, in that sense many many uh, opportunities are there not only for that in universities also you can be go for a teaching and do research on your own and some com- companies also you can that's what i think hmm. yes absolutely correct dr prabhakar ethnographic uh, on, and actually now slowly eventually in india ethnographic research is getting more popularity because it has become essential and necessary for businesses or companies to be understanding or study cultures or society the uh, surrounding of the participant the objects in it elements in it with regards to the product and so ethnographic research is gaining fortunately getting more popularity in a more business sense also it is not just limited to the classic definition of recording indigenous societies or uh, ethnic or other ethnicities uh, because ethnic uh, because ethnography get happen in suppose you go to a starbucks and you can even do ethnographic study in starbucks also okay yeah. thank you most yeah. welcome um any last minute question guys before we uh, close the sessions uh, thank you so much for attending i hope this was insightful for everyone but uh, anybody wants to ask me anything maybe one or two last questions um, i you can always reach out to me via my email address uh, sorry yes please so just uh, one question yeah like so in user or uh, research like in user experience so we also conduct our various uh, interviews with uh, users okay like uh, is there any variations uh, between this ethnography and uh, the normal study that we make in an environment or it's like anything uh, as i see like ethnography talks more people and cultures so is there anything like ethnography is only with hollywood or even like Uh, anything i said like in a manufacturing environment it can ethnographic study can happen in any context ethnographic st- research happening if a certain study so uh, see ethno ethnographic uh, study can happen in any environment and uh, it uh, ethnographic study is basically a part of qualitative research so if you are wanting to study a manufacturing environment that there also you can do ethnographic study your participants become the people who are working there and culture is the no, just don't go by the classic definition of culture as uh, what is there in books or as to uh, maybe set of uh, standard rules or patterns or however it is uh, but uh, culture and so in in this case in the user research case or books research case culture would become the culture of that manufacturing unit so ethnographic research is possible in every context in every situation it is not just limited to social sciences or in particular to okay yeah it's a part of qualitative case, research yes 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 like uh, is it like is it really like one has to go with the academy first and have to go with this because there are many things i have practically gained mm-hmm. like uh, there are like when i was working in singapore my director took me several places where i went there and uh, almost studied for a few hours two days and this and all uh, uh i have done by myself but i have not done made any studies and mm-hmm. when we put into a live uh, opportunity like this and go through this google and so many articles mm-hmm. over it mm-hmm. okay so that could be a better route or like one has to study something and have to go so i am not uh, i am by training i have not done anything to do with social sciences or even uh, you know anything to do with visuals or something so personally i feel that ethnography is more of a something that you learn more and more on the field because yes you may do you take a course it helps you uh, you you uh, 
maybe from a better understanding of things but it eventually you get to learn more through practice it's all about practice and practice because no two cultures or no two spaces no two settings are uh, similar even if say suppose you want to do a ethnographic research in my house you and you ask one question to all the members in my family you will not get a same uh, answer so it is all about practice so yes now thanks to google there are a lot of information avail available a lot of courses available uh, not uh, i mean but those those courses are more in relevance to business research or ux research uh, how to use ethnography in uh, qualitative ux research so but yes uh, uh, you can uh, this is personally i feel it which one should practice practice as much as possible when it comes to ethnographic uh, research but the only challenge in this case is time and funding money and time because to go in the field you need time you need money so these are cha two challenges yeah yeah thanks about that all right and um, i got a clarity on it thank you um any other questions uh, maybe jitendra singh uh, okay yes jitendra dr singh you have a question i think you have your i can see your ha hand uh, up you all can also reach me at my email address uh, which you probably have already and uh, you can if you have some question you can write it there also i'll be happy to help okay uh, so i assume no, there are no more questions left and uh, thank you so much for part coming and joining in the session and uh, i'll uh, keep post i'll post about my next session soon uh, it will also be again about use of cameras and different things so that's it that's all from my side thank you very much have a great weekend everyone thank you goodbye